Okay, folks, so um, we're going to get started again. I've gotten some feedback. Um, I, I understand that some of you are, are grappling with uh, quite slow computers. Um, and uh, I, I hadn't appreciated that. Um, I will, I, I'm trying to evaluate how to handle it. I think um, for, for the balance of today, I'm just going to um, try to slow the presentation Tomorrow, I think I'm going to be working off the computer of your speed, so that so that it's taking you longer will take me longer, and go paste my comments. Um, so uh, I apologize; I wasn't aware of this issue, and um, appreciate you bearing with it um, so stoically. We'll try to uh, try to get in a better situation tomorrow. Okay, um, I'd like to make just some closing remarks on um, on state charts, and then we're going to examine how agents communicate through messaging. This is really important, um, and that will be our, our sort of fun, fun, uh, crowning sort of um, uh, introduction for today. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, no, you mean, so, so like, what was going on with that uh, system dynamics component? Yeah, it, it was going to, it was going to affect it. Right. That's right. But then, but then you looked at the actual uh, chart with the network diagram, and it would suddenly change from one to affect it, wouldn't change the color. Yeah. So, um, so it was randomly, it was randomly deciding who would affect them. Well, okay, so, so. There's no spatial contagion. Is that right? There's no spatial contagion. So. So this is before the anything from any from agent or system dynamics was added in, um, folks. So uh, just to be clear about this, um, this last model which we had, um, there was no contagion processes going from susceptible to infected. Maybe I should have said you know normal glycemic and diabetic or something like that because there was no interaction between people. We're going to add this in just a few minutes. But at the moment, there was no interaction. It was a, each person was their own solitude. They may have been connected, but there was no exploitation of that network in any way right now. Okay, so then this essentially was the data within each individual. This model here. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, this is within each individual. In the system dynamics, uh, when I added that in, it was totally within each That's individual. Within, it's within person? It's within person. See, that's the part you can't see. You can't see it's which where you're in. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is this is person over here. Okay. Um, so um, and and actually one thing, uh, just one um, little uh, hint, folks. When when I'm on one of these tabs here, um, if you look over on the left hand side, you will see um, highlighted one of these subcomponents. Um, so that will highlight which thing is currently being displayed. So if I'm in this, it says person up here, but it's hard, particularly for those in the back. Um, Anwan Yi, could you close the doors? Um, it's hard to see what this is. But over here, it's bold. And that means I'm in person. If I go here, I'm in Maine. If I go here, I'm in a large population. Um, here, I'm in simulation. So if you can look over here for X to Qs, that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. We're, we're going to try to get a better projector tomorrow, um, one that's brighter. Okay, um, so uh, just a couple closing remarks on, um, on transitions. Um, uh, transitions can occur at, uh, of many types. Um, the first one we've seen this morning with, with rates, and we just saw it again now. There you have a certain chance per unit time, a likelihood of transition per unit time. It's a, also called a hazard. Um, so you have a certain hazard rate of transition from A to B. Um, so you have a mortality hazard, a certain chance per unit time. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, more broadly, it's, it, one could quite readily incorporate continuously varying hazards into an any logic model. As someone ages, their you know, rate of transition increases according to their age, for example. 
Um, the analogy of that is with first order delays in a system dynamics model, where you have a certain chance per unit time of the individual going from here to here, and therefore you have the, the equation associated with this would be something like um, uh, I over some mean time that you're infected. This basically posits some, um, some process uh, with a certain fixed chance per unit time of one over mu. And this mu is, is the length of time you're na on average in that state. So in a system dynamics model, first order delay would correspond to having this rate, a fixed rate within this um, stock and flow model. Uh, Ningta, could you uh, close that door there? Um, the sun's getting lower. Um, okay, so um, a correspondence there. Um, so these are transition hazards. We're specifying rates of transition. Uh, it's very important to realize that in a system dynamics diagram, we're going to have, you know, I, the number of people in the stock times this chance of transitioning is the rate of the flow. Here we're characterizing each individual. And so each individual has a certain chance of one over mu, one over this mean time of, of transitioning. OK? Um, OK. Um, so uh, I think, I think we'll, we'll, we'll skip this part of it. You could follow it in the slides. Um, there are, however, a second type of transition, which we also saw this morning, of a fixed residence time. You have an exact amount of time you spend in that state before you leave via this transition. If you spend that amount of time, you're out of here on this transition. Um, and that's supported in any logic by clicking on this transition. And you can see there's a timeout. We saw that earlier today. So we could have a timeout of, say, exactly time 10. Oops, um, time 10. Or a, you know, some, some parameter value. Um, and um, there are times where you want to do that. If you want a state chart that keeps track of people ages 0 through 4, you know, all ages 0 through 4 together, 5 through 9, 10 through 14, a common division into five year age categories, you would have fixed transition times out of each of those. And it turns out that that can make a difference in terms of, a considerable difference in terms of the accuracy with which you can capture certain phenomena. Um, and sometimes there's tightly defined time constants associated with things. Yes, in the sense that this could be a function, for example. So a timeout could uh, be a complex function that um, changes uh, based on conditions, or a rate could be evolving over time based on how long they've spent in that state. Um, if you do that, however, there's a need to make that rate recalculate periodically. And there's, there's ways of doing that by calling an, an unchanged event. So speak with me if you're interested in doing that, because there's a, a few subtleties. But yes, you can have a time varying rate. You can have a timeout. You can also have an arbitrary condition under which they transition. Um, or they can transition on a message or when they arrive at a destination. Okay. Um, uh, I would like to talk more about it. Um, but I do want to press on to transmission of phenomenon. Um, so uh, there's a couple other elements you should know about. One of them is a, is a choice point, the sort of um, uh, conditional transition. So you can have a branch. You go one way under certain conditions. You go back under another condition, for example. So uh, within this model, we could add a branch in and under certain conditions, they, for example, could go on to infective. Otherwise, they could stay susceptible. So for example, um, here's a model for TB. When most people of TB getting infected with TB do not develop TB disease. And um, in this case, what we have is a person transitioning upon uh, exposure to this transition. This determines whether or not they get infected. If they do get infected, they, they come down here. And then it figures out whether or not there's primary progression. If not, they go on to latent, excuse me, latent TB, otherwise to active TB. And there's a certain probability of them going this way or that way. So these, these branches you can use to have conditional branching. 
where that condition may be based on some random condition, some aspect of their current state, such as their age or other aspects, et cetera. Um, so these transitions can be used to kind of route them among different state charts under different conditions. Um, you can hear more about this in my, my online videos. Finally, there's an exit point, which is the final resting point of this transition. Um, uh, and you may wish to have someone go here under certain defined conditions, such that this is no longer relevant. Uh, for example, if they passed away, or if you had a transition from one situation to another, say from job to retirement, you might you might go to a retirement state where job-related transitions are not relevant. Okay, um, so uh, so that's notable. Um, now, also worth talking about is self-transitions. You'll see in some models, including the one this morning, a transition of a state to itself. That actually sort of leaves the state and comes back into it. Um, and it uh, is useful if you want things to happen within the state at a certain rate. So while you're in the state, if you want something to happen at a certain rate, you create a self-transition as it fires at that rate, and then it can undertake some action. And we'll see that in just a minute here. OK. Um, you can build up multiple state charts for a given agent. For example, capturing their evolution with respect to different conditions, diabetes, tuberculosis, tobacco use, et cetera. Um, and uh, suffice it to say, it's much easier to keep track of comorbidities in this case than it is with a stock and flow diagram, where it gets very, very messy. Because um, you have to keep track of all possible combinations there. Here, you describe each one. There can be interactions between the two, your presence in in a smoking state may your, affect your chance of developing diabetes, your effect of uh, the chance of you developing active TB, for example. But for the most part, they can be described fairly independently. Okay? Um, you can also have the residence time in a certain state depend, uh, dictate your rate of transition out of the state. For example, for smokers, it's known the longer they've stayed as a, from after the they quit smoking, the less chance they have of relapsing. And you can capture that quite readily in a more natural way than dividing them up into, you know, category after category, you know, former smoker from zero to six months, from six to 12. Rather than doing that, you can just have the rate vary according to that. Again, there's, there's some subtleties getting it to recalculate that rate enough, but you could put in an event to do that, et cetera. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna confine my, um, those comments there, um, and I am going to um, just take us through the, the final lecture here on, on sending and receiving messages. And this will sum up um, uh, some of, of the lessons uh, learned earlier, or will help, help those to sink in. Okay, um, so I'm gonna stop, um, stop my... Uh, audio and stop my video and um